Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. I'm here to talk about the news, the events. I got a uh, couple fun little short clips for you guys, including some new programs on MCAT that are sure to entice you, to inspire you, and to make you think. Let's talk about some uh, things that are happening that uh, won't necessarily make you think but will make you uh, kind of panic is that there's more of that flood warning happening this week until uh, Thursday uh, noon so you have that fair weather 55 degrees it's going to change with isolated showers scattered thunderstorms with uh, 50 to 20 percent chances flowing pretty much all day today with uh, 40 percent happening tomorrow and hopefully by well it looks like most of the week it looks kind of rainy but I'll have more than that a little uh, for your Friday to talk about whether or not the weather is going to be just as bad if it if not worse later on in the week um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry to be the bear of bad news but it just nothing no <laughs> we talk about weather it's just flooding flooding and more flooding and when it gets too hot all the snow runoff y you know like consists of flooding there's no like happy balance you need to just like maybe just like kind of like uh, maybe 60 degree temperatures and no rain that would be nice but it's just the way it is in news, uh, with the flood water getting into uh, all bits and pieces of the Missoula County, a new tea-colored plume in the Clark Fork River may include contaminants from the old Smithford Stone holding ponds prompted um, Missoula County commissioners to request water samples on Tuesday, a plea echoed by Montana's U.S. Senators. According to an article uh, in the Missoulian by E.V. Bryan, um, an official letter to be given to Federal Environmental Protection Agency for immediate action to determine the impact of the area. Record high flood water persists through the week, but many things are put on hold as a result of high moving waters through Missoula. Of course, not enough uh, to stop people from uh, surfing Brennan's wave, but to keep officials from these high flow rivers, the EPA has conducted tests and uh, monitoring the site since its closure in 2010, but Senator John Tester calls this an emergency situation due to flooding, and Steve Daines echoes his fellow senator on this issue. Sarah Sparks, the EPA program manager on the site, said that she had already gotten water samples from the river and said that it will be uh, and will, um, will be testing for heavy metals, which will be uh, known in about a week or two about the results. Um, but of course, uh, but says that there's no groundwater or river, uh, or the river is in danger of contaminants. Um, the Montana Department of, of Environmental Quality says that they believe the dark colored water is sedimentation from the floodwaters, but both senators call for a thorough investigation of full site to capture the full scope of the environmental impacts and hazards. Um, in state news, in Haver, two women were stopped by Border Patrol officers over the weekend who accused them of being illegal immigrants solely for the use of the Spanish language. The women, who are U.S. citizens, said that uh, the agent detained them for about 35 minutes Wednesday in Haver, a small city 30 miles from the U.S.-Canadian border. One of the women, Ann Suda, asked the agent why he was asking for identification. And this is... And quote, I recorded him admitting that he just stopped us because we were speaking Spanish, no other reason. Suda wrote on Facebook, post published early Wednesday. The agent said, speaking Spanish is very unheard of up here. Uh, Customs and Border Pro Protection spokesman uh, Jason Givens declare, uh, declined to answer questions about the incident. He released a statement that said that the incident is being reviewed to ensure that all appropriate policies were followed. A uh, federal lawsuit filed last month claims that the Haver Border Patrol agents detained nearly 24 hours uh, of a newlywed woman for, uh, who was four months pregnant and her husband from Mexico in 2016, even though they both had shown uh, the agents uh, the correct documentation. Uh, Border Patrol cannot stop a person for any reason alone, so in some instances, uh, minor infractions have been used to check citizenships. Um, in national news, Trump takes out one step closer to be the first U.S. president to meet with leader from North Korea. Uh, Donald Trump is in South Korea to meet with President Ma um, Moon Jae-in um, to talk about how Trump should approach the new North Korean dictator. And if I butcher that name, I'm sorry. But according to the South Korean uh, uh, security experts, a meeting is still scheduled. The Trump administration insists that North Korea must completely dismantle its nuclear program before getting any relief from economic sanctions. South Korea, on the other end, um, want has their own motives. They want to get the uh, um, the the city um, in which. Uh, I, I'm kind of going off script here, but they want to get the city in which the uh, intermediate um, the uh, 
standoff line is, the uh, neutral zone. They want to get the city in the neutral zone. But of course, um, in, other new in other ways, of Trump has complained about what he sees as the country's freeloading reliance on U.S. military might as leverage against North Korea. But Trump is also unhappy with the U.S. trade deficit with South Korea, which tops $10 billion last year. Two months ago, the U.S. agreed on a revised trade agreement with South Korea. It limits steel imports from that country and extends a tariff on imported pickup trucks. So that's kind of what's happening there. There's a lot of uh, deals, a lot of things going on here, a lot of uh, people trying to get their own um, motives um, kind of uh, furthered in these talks. So we'll keep an eye on that later on, and we'll see what happens. So, And I got this information from NPR News and The Missoulian uh, talking about what's happening in and around this uh, state of Montana and the world as we know it. But that concludes all your uh, news really items. I got some new programs for you. Uh, Jack Metcalf uh, joins uh, Steve Glukert in Look Before You Speak. We got a brand new um, Missoula Out and About featuring the Bonner Milltown History site. So without further ado, here are some new programs. And when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some city council stuff. So stay with me. People do want immediate uh, results sometimes. And drawing is not always the best uh, medium for immediate results, I find. Um, when I think the, some of the benefits I see in my students when they draw, is they start looking at the world a little bit differently. They start noticing the details and nuances. Um, that's when I think their drawings start to improve is when they start seeing the world a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And they start not taking things for granted. I guess sometimes we just glance at things and we take it for granted. We don't realize everything that we're looking at. Timberjack, Timberjack. Hi everyone, I'm Joel Baird from General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television inviting you to another edition of Out and About. Today we're at the Bonner Milltown History Center and we're going to visit the folks who make this center run. We're, gonna, we're having a candidate form tonight, and the first race we're going to look at is the county commissioner's race, and the two candidates are Gene Curtis and Josh Schlotnick. I um, think that the most urgent things that will be on the county's um, agenda this year will be a couple things. One is economic development. Um, we need to have higher paying jobs uh, so people can afford houses here. Uh, we're not going to get the price of land to go down probably, so that'll be one of the solutions. And haven't had a job that I had to apply for. Everything I've done has been the result of co-creating a vision and turning that vision into a reality. I've been inspired to do this because I fear for the trajectory we're on. We're headed, we kind of are at actually in this place, a deeply economically segregated society. <laughs> But there are people who can afford to live here, own a house, and people who just flat out can't. Oh my gosh, it's so great to be here. Um, I have had the good fortune of working with a small team of folks from Missoula for the past year under the leadership of Kaya Peterson. And my experience with them uh, was similar to what I experienced last night with the Invest Health team, and that is that you all have a lot of really smart, compassionate people that are committed to making a positive difference in, in Missoula. So I'm delighted to be part of your efforts today. And I looked at the body of work that uh, I had created, and it, it, none of it was particularly interesting uh, to me. And th that wouldn't want to be my heritage. It was all, all pretty much about money. So I retired from my agency. I went back to school to get my MFA. I uh, started writing short stories, and because I came from a business background, I approached it like a business. It was very methodical to me. The, the good thing about the advertising business, what it does for you is rejection is horrible in the advertising business because it's right to your face. You don't get a, a note from somebody that like, this is awful, you know, and, <laughs> um, and you have to be regimented, so that, that kind of worked for me. All right, guys, I just want to show you a little taste of the county commissioner's race, but of course you can go on to our website, MCAT.org, to find all your information about um, what's happening in the city of Missoula. Uh, we, we've recorded a couple of the candidates form for the um, U.S. Senate, the uh, U.S. Congress, and again, the uh, 
um, the Missoula County Commissioners. And of course, uh, if you are interested in even more fine details, you can always look up, uh, go to MCAT.org for the information about some of the uh, U.S. House, of the uh, Montana State Legislature. Um, I think House, House District 91 uh, is up for contention, so there's a bunch of people running for that as well. And it's a meeting that we covered here on MCAT a, a month ago or something like that. So you can check that out, MCAT.org, to find out more information about that. So let's talk about some city council stuff. So let's talk about the beginning of the city council, which usually consists of public comment. I'm going to I'm kind of like I'm going to skip over public comment because I have a lot other uh, topics to talk about on the show. But I'm just going to kind of briefly give you a rundown of it. Um, so there are more people asking about uh, some of the money that goes into the legal fees for uh, the combination towards the um, uh, the city of Missoula. So the city of Missoula hired uh, an, uh, an outside uh, law firm to represent us, um, and now there's a continuation trial for a further, um, uh, I guess, li uh, litigation towards Mountain Water Company and the Carlisle Group, um, and a lot of people. There's this uh, um, with along with Jesse Ramos has been um, requesting a certain ideas to be made public about the uh, fees and the things um, more public. But of course, according to an interview on K KGVO, um, Tim Nugent, the Missoula city attorney, uh, qu was quoted in saying, the litigation is still going on. The attorneys that represent the city have requested that it be attorney-client privilege and attorney work uh, product privilege, and they have the information. We don't have it in my office, and I don't know any city office that has it. So the attorneys have it, and upon any request, you'd have to request it from the attorneys that represent the city of Missoula. And you can find out more by going to uh, the city website and even calling them um, at their offices at City Hall. The city has authorized the acquisition of property and various improvements of city facilities. Among the acquisition, construction, and, equip and equipping um, of one or more police and public safety buildings and construction of an installation of public improvements related to the Missoula Art Museum Art Park project. So, Dale Bickle, attorney, talks about the overhead to the art park. Things occurred. Uh, one was that there was an uh, overrun on the um, cost of the project by about fifty thousand um, dollars, and that was uh, and, and the original uh, capital improvement that um, created the budget for that um, wasn't amended at the time. Um, and the other uh, portion of that, um, about um, one hundred twenty thousand dollars of of estimated. Fundra uh, private fundraising that was going to be done by a fundraising committee, and um, we didn't reach those targets. Um, and so that created a, a shortfall in the amount of the uh, city assessment that was going to um, be placed on, uh, in our assessment schedules. Um, back in December, uh, we took this issue to city council and for a budget amendment related to that. Um, council passed that amendment, and, and what we have today is the um, the debt instrument used to, to do that assessment. All right, so that was uh, the city uh, the city accountant accountant um, Dale Bickle talking about some of the uh, the shortfall that came uh, among um, the art park. So the art park, the whole idea behind this thing is that they wanted to build an art park a, a while ago, and they said it's like, hey, uh, we'll we'll have if you if you put down some money, we'll fundraise for some more money. Um, for unfortunately, the Art Park, Missoula Art Museum, were unable to reach certain amounts of money, and now the city of Missoula is paying a lot of that overhead as a result. So $400,000 that the city will be getting on a loan out of the $3.6 million loan, which uh, is going to the Art Park, while the other $3.2 million is going to a police facility, uh, evidence facility, that they, uh, that they approved uh, a while ago. So... John Debari, who is against the art park portion in favor of the police uh, department Evans facility, talks about this and also about uh, having an uh, amendment to this motion as well. I thought that it was uh, in our best interest to uh, go ahead and pay the overrun out of cash reserves. That's what our cash reserve account is for. And it would then obviate the need to finance that over 20 years, which also cost us additional funding. So as a result of that, I would like to offer an amended motion. May I do that, amendment to the motion? And that is to reduce the total amount of funding um, asked for in the motion, which I believe is $3,600,000 by $188,000 
$188,075. All right, so um, Brian von Lochsberg responds to this amendment saying that, um, well, basically he thinks that the city of Missoula should stick by their original agreement. We're stuck with um, a couple choices. Uh, they're both uh, bad choices. Um, and if we um, were the amendment to pass, um, that's going to come out of our reserves. And, and normally, and if we were at our reserve target percentage, uh, I'd be inclined to support it. Um, we're not at that percentage. That's been a topic of discussion uh, for uh, at different times over the course of, of several years uh, and the importance of showing progress uh, to building that up. Uh, given that, when I weigh the costs of the two approaches of um, uh, bonding it in this fashion with the other amounts versus uh, the impact to the cash reserves, um, I think it's a more prudent uh, decision to uh, to keep it as is. Um, but All right, so that was uh, Brian von Lossberg um, talking about that. Um, they opened it up for pub public comment, and here's Jerry Ballas for public comment um, talking about how he feels about the art park. On a mistake that somebody made, and according to the paper, somebody double counted a grant. And don't you hold anybody responsible for that when you write your contract with people? When you're going to, Mr. Mayor, when you're going to do this next wave thing. Who's going to be responsible for that? You're going to write an open-ended contract and they're going to come back and they spend more money on something and they're going to come back to the city and ask you to pay for it? Uh, I appreciate John's uh, amendment, uh, at least trying to take the money out of your reserve fund, because I guess you, the city council, are the ones that are really responsible for the air. All right, so that was uh, John Ballas. Um, wait, 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 let me... Yep, Jerry Ballas with public comment. Needless to say, this uh, amendment motion did fail, and the original motion to get the $3.6 million loan was approved. John DeBarry responds to Ballas' comments um, after the fact. Um, the funding, I think Mr. Ballas raises a good point about um, having to be extra careful when we enter into agreements with uh, organizations who are well-meaning, have excellent projects for the community, but um, for some reason or another may not be able to execute on, on their, um, their aspirations regarding those uh, projects. And so um, I'm hopeful that we can sort of learn a lesson from this and, and be thoughtful and careful as to how we craft or, uh, agreements with uh, organizations with which we partner in the future. All right. So... Um Many organizations um, in the city of Missoula, uh, in the city of Missoula, work with the city of Missoula and have a nonprofit status. And a lot of times, uh, they work out a deal with the city of Missoula to basically not have to pay any taxes or property taxes in their p specific area. If the kind of uh, nonprofit always is kind of like enriching, um, the Missoula Art Museum is one of those examples of where they don't have to necessarily pay um, taxes on being there because it's a cultural hub and the and the only thing that the city has paid for in the last uh, couple of years is the janitorial work and staff to clean up the place but a lot of this is volunteer and fundraising and a lot of money um, that goes to the Missouri Museum is uh, mostly fundraising so um, June 18th is uh, they're gonna be talking about that uh, fun little uh, title 20 uh, pro uh, um, um, uh, growth policy, uh, gentrification. I don't know. There's there's a lot of terms people have been throwing out this, but uh, Title 20.85 is like the big one. Title 19 was the original zoning policy, but they updated it for Title 20.85. And I've been talking about this for a little while, but they want to kind of adapt this to the university district and basically reflect on the character development of the university area and potential catalysts for future projects. Um, and June 18th is when they're going to have this public hearing. Um, I'll, I'm, I'll definitely be able to cover that when I come back from my vacation um, later in that month as well. So I hope to talk about this a little bit more. Heidi West. Um, talks about this and how she feels about uh, a more uh, how she feels about regulation in general on development of people's private properties that preserving neighborhood character is equally important to people that live in their neighborhoods um, and if we get to have the luxury to choose where we live 
um, based on you know the neighborhood and what it looks like rather than just price um, a results that we all feel strongly about where we live um, and I think that the university neighborhood already has a lot of existing parameters that direct land use decisions that align in a greater way to the physical landscape that's present than many other neighborhoods in Missoula. Um, I think that there are other neighborhoods that have a greater disparity between what's physically present um, and the allowable zoning. And I think that, you know, just in zoning alone, uh, there's a history there that encapsulates inequity where traditional lower class neighborhoods um, with high rental rates and also less ability to self-advocate are zoned denser and with less protections for the people that live in them. Um, so for example, my own neighborhood is the, has a historic um, neighborhood which is pre predominantly single family homes um, which was formerly occupied by railroad and mill workers and they're being replaced by residential developments that have no setbacks in some cases um, because that's allowed by zoning, especially along the railroad corridors. Um, and I think that as policymakers, we should be considering um, the folks that have the least resources and advocate for them first um, because if we raise the bottom, we raise it for everybody. Um, All right, so that was Heidi West talking about some of the issues when it comes to um, um, development just in general. Um, and how uh, the rattlesnake community, which, which the one she's part of the ward is, is she's kind of reflecting on that as well. If you want to reflect on this meeting, you can go to ci.mozilla.mt.us. It is a wonderful website to find all your information about the city council and all the committee meetings and more. All you got to do is go to your government. You go to agendas, webcasts, and minutes. It's right here. You can't miss it. You click on it. It'll bring you to this nice little page right here. You have to wait a couple seconds because uh, Internet in Montana, right? Um, and it brings you all these meetings. You can see agenda items for all upcoming meetings that are happening this morning. Pretty much Committee of the Whole looks like it's starting as early as now. Uh, here's a couple other meetings as well. We got City Council and then the last Public Safety and Health from um, May 16th. So those are some of your um, um, informational um things um, about the city of Missoula. So if you're interested in that, once again, ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, I want to talk about dub and stuff. Um, dub and stuff is where I find old public domain movies and redub my voice over it. So without further ado, here's dub and stuff. And when I return, I will talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. So stay with me. Wah, 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 wah. Thanks for uh, rowing the boat while I do all the work. Oh, sorry about the whole um, labeled lunch um, in your fridge type of deal. You know, I never really, I'm just happy that we can be friends and that you um, invited me to this secluded place in the ocean. Mm, yes, I'm glad you joined me. I couldn't have done this without you. Well, I've asked you plenty of times, but you never took me until now. Wow, you sure ask a lot of questions. Can't we just enjoy fishing like a couple of guys with no ulterior motives? Huh, I suppose we can. Uh, I just can't get a read on your personality. First you're hot, then you're cold, then you're not, and you're kind of bold. <laughs> I'm not that old. Seriously, why'd you bring me out here? I can't really fish. I'm really not that good at rowing this damn boat. Heck, I don't even know what this thing is. I'm not the kind of person you want to bring along on the boat. Besides, I'm not that dumb. I know you wanted to get me alone to talk to me about something. What is it? Huh? I'm really confused about the situation that we're in. We're on the ocean, in the middle of nowhere. You've been really acting kind of nice to me. I think you're up to something. And besides, that brown paper bag wasn't even completely laid. Oh! Ah, stop hitting me with a fish. It's really weird. Here you go. See how you like it. <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> Don't start something you can't finish. <laughs> okay, this Yo! is just... Yo! <laughs> this is not how Godfather 2 went. Yeah, splash! This is what you get. Splash! Whoa! Stay away from my lunch. I'm way over here. You, what do you? Ah! Uh, that hit you. No, it didn't. Ah! Uh, I swear I hit you. Don't be stupid, lunch stealer. Yeah! Uh, I can't believe you were trying to drown me so close to the shore. It's weird. It's not that stupid. Uh, get back here! Yeah! Kapow! That sure made contact. Oh no! Oh! You ate my lunch. You're right. I'm sorry. We forgive me. Let really this be a lesson to you in the future. Don't ever eat your lunch i'm sorry brother i never really meant to hurt you i don't think you mean it yeah oh ah. my face
Owie, 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 owie. Shut Stop. up, you. I don't believe you for a second that you're not going to eat my lunch. This is very important to me. I need that food. I'm gluten intolerant, and it's the only food I can actually eat on this godforsaken island. Do you hear me? Uh, ooh, ee, ah, mm. Come here. I didn't want it to come to this. <laughs> what is it? Uh, what, what's so funny? <laughs> gluten intolerant isn't real. How dare you be so ignorant? <laughs> gluten intolerant is just a sexy word for bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? Ugh, my head hurts. I don't care what you gluten people think. I don't eat gluten. Period. Lunch. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. So if you're planning on uh, doing some things, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net for all your information. That's where I get my brief information of basically just copy and paste a lot of the things from there and just kind of giving you the rundown of what's the thing, what's the beat on the city of Missoula for Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, but let's kick things off. Uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Uh, Mismo Gymnastics and Roots Acro Sports Center are the place to be if you have a kid who's in preschool or not in school and are just learning to um, walk and if you want them to g be a little more advanced with gymnastics, why not? You know, it's never too early to get them exposed to this. And it's in a giant padded room in a safe environment in those places. Art in the moment, Missouri Art Museum starts this new program at the MAM, which provides a friendly art viewing and art making experience for those in the early stages of dementia and their caregivers. Based on the Missoula of Modern Arts Meet Me program, Art in the Moment creates a dementia-friendly learning community and provides an opportunity for caregivers and those who with dementia to be uh, together in a creative and relaxed environment. Uh, Tiny Tales is at a power place at 10.30 a.m., which is a fancy word for the Missoula Food Bank. Um, you can go there. Um, Kids learn nine new words a day, and this is for kids aged birth to uh, five years of age. Uh, Spectrum Robot Robotics is happening in their uh, makerspace and more. Actually, it's not their makerspace. It's in more in their kind of like science lab. So Spectrum is a place to be from 11 to 5 p.m. in their open hours. Communication Practice Group is starting at 12 noon. Genetic Rec and Peace Center, um, a compassionate and, communi and compassionate communication practice group. It's every second and fourth Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m. And it's at the Jeanette Rick and Peace Center, which is uh, 519 South Higgins. And it's also near their Olive Branch uh, location as well. And it's facilitated by Patrick Marsalek. And it's, uh, they uh, ask you to bring lunch. Um, but if you're interested in doing some lunch and playing some games, Missoula Senior Center has all that in spades, where they provide uh, Scrabble and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 12.30. Missoula School Writers Group are happening from 3.30 to 5 p.m. at Missoula Public Library. And this is the place to be for any uh, middle schooler who wants to improve their writing skills and wants some um, um, constructive criticism. Um, Missoula Art Museum Awards 2018 at the Missoula Art Museum starting at 5.30 tonight. All MAM supporters are invited to join the official art park opening and a celebratory evening to honor the MAM's most generous supporters and volunteers. It is the one year anniversary of the opening of the art park and this year's MAM's award goes to the art park volunteer extraordinaire Kevin Gordon and Kevin became the backbone of the art park com committee le uh, leading to uh, community fundraising with his absolute belief in the project and uh, guiding the construction process with his wisdom and calm demeanor. And also tonight at the Zootown Arts Community Center is two hour class as seen on so basically, if you've ever seen a how-to how video on anything, um, this is a great place to be for Zootown Arts. This is a two-hour class which will focus on projects that are easy to make and complete, but may require a new-to-you technique or an eccentric, uh, uh, eccentric materials. Um, class attendees will be strongly encouraged to personalize their work and create something that is unique and meaningful to them. So it's basically kind of like, uh, um, create it. What? I don't know, something. That's kind of how it is. Uh, so introduction to beekeeping in Montana. Hey, 
Beekeeping is becoming more and more prevalent in the state of Montana and in around the nation. I have a cousin who is a professional uh, beekeeping instructor, so this is one of those things that are pretty close to my heart. And a presentation by Big Sky Beekeepers of Missoula that will cover the basic beehive at, uh, anatomy, how and where to find equipment and bees, pests, and disease that affect the honeybee, and hive management. There will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation, and they meet in the large meeting room from 6.30 to 8 p.m. in the Missoula Public Library. But if you don't want to learn about that and you want to learn all about that hemp oil, uh, th and they have at the University of Montana at 7 p.m. and learn about hemp CBD oil by Zillis is changing lives and how it, how it will change your financial future as well. They will be joining the presidential ambassador all the way from I uh, Indiana, um, Daniel Taylor, as well as our local regional ambassador, Robin Rowe, will both bring a wealth of knowledge and experience all about hemp. Missoula Homegrown Comedy at the Roxy. So um, with all those uh, um, comedians in the open mic, they find the best of the comedians and they invite them to the Roxy to perform comedy for you guys tonight at 7.30 p.m. at the Roxy. And it's a two-drink minimum or refreshment if you don't want to um, drink alcohol. So that's a couple of things that are happening that night. Here are some of the late night events that are happening. 7.30 p.m. at the uh, Silver Slipper, they have a trivia night. 8.30 p.m. at the Press Box, they have a trivia night. Um, Rocking Karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse, and Craptastic Karaoke is going to be at the Bladlander. So those are all your events for your Wednesday. Stay with me. Here is an art clip from uh, that's going to be running until May 25th, which is... This Friday, and this is going to be at, I believe this is, yeah, this is the Clay Studio of Missoula. So you only have this week to check out the Clay Studio of Missoula. And they usually, they usually change out their um, art setup every week. So uh, every uh, month, sorry. I'm just like thinking too much. But yeah, enjoy this art clip. Um, hopefully you guys get the chance to go to the Clay Studio of Missoula. It's n right next to Lowell Elementary School. You can't miss it. Um, but without further ado, here is this art clip. And when I come back, I'll talk about your Thursday events and then wrap up the show. Yay! <laughs> to our very own Rick Phillips for producing those art clips and more. Here is some events that are happening for your Thursday. Family fun time at the Y starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. If you are a family and you're looking for some family fun together, family fun time at the Y is the place to be. Bring your family. They have a pool. They have a basketball court. They have a rock climbing wall and more all at the YMCA. Tiny Tales is going to be at the Mizubupa Public Library at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. Spectrum has heart dissections from 11 to 5. Bridge Group meets at the Missoula Senior Center at 12.45. Uh, it meets every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for Party Bridge. All ages and non-skill levels are welcome. It's a $2.25 fee is charged to cover expenses. Make it and take it crafts at the Big Sky Branch. If you, um, Missoula Public Library hosts this uh 
make it into your crafts uh, event at the Big Sky High School um, branch library. Registration is not required. It's drop in and it's 728 2400 extension 8605 because it's uh, MCPS school district. Paper Wasp Nest Art, Missouri Insectarium, um, is a great place to learn about bugs. It's like the uh, spectrum, but it's all about bugs. Today they will be creating a beautiful work of art inspired by some of the talented most um, nest, uh, the talented nest builders in the paper wasps. Come by and find out what materials paper wasps use to construct their nests and who lives inside. They'll be talking about the beneficial things paper wasps do, local nests, and they will have a table to examine with a predator feeding at starting at 3.30 p.m. at the Missoula Insectarium. I don't know if uh, wasps are mutually exclusive with the predator feeding. Um, Lego Club is starting at 3.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, and it's for people who like Legos. Kids like Legos. They have Legos, so, you know, just don't walk around in your bare feet. Boom. Um, Ladies Pottery Painting Night, Zootown Arts Community Center. Did you see that cute pottery project on Pinterest? Do you know that they have everything you need to make your cute pottery project? And this is uh, Ladies Pottery Night, which happens... Um, Tonight, uh, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at the Zootown Arts Community Center, and all women artists will receive 20% off pottery paint in the studio. All ages and experienced lovers are welcome to participate. No reservations are necessary, and you can just create and make some pottery. It's Women's Pottery Night, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. But if you guys are interested in going out and about, Later that night, they have uh, The Trail to the Tin Cup, which is an author reading and signing at the Fact and Fiction Bookstore. Um, if you heard of the book The Trail to Tin Cup, you can go check it out. But if you uh, want are interested in um, learning about a book that talks about the loss of a family member, this is the place to do it. Um, RBG is going to be at the Roxy. This is going to be a special event and fundraiser. Um, RBG, let me just double check on the website. And it's basically, oh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is, is 84 years old, um, has to develop a breathtaking legacy and becoming an unexpected pop culture. So this is uh, the documentary movie, um, which is going to be talking about uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. All right. So Missoula Open Deck Society DJ Dance Party at the VFW tonight. Uh, Pedro, the lion, is going to be at the top hat. It's going to be rock music. And then finally, uh, he's going to have some more karaoke at the Dark Horse, which is um, just right next to the Sunrise Saloon. So you can enjoy all those events and more by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's happening in Missoula? This is it. This is what's happening in Missoula. But that pretty much does it for me. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me. I uh, want to remind you guys that if you are interested in finding out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. Um, I have guests. I have other things. I have other things. And I have many other things that happen on the show with Flagship Friday, fun little videos and clips. And just talk about Missoula. You know, Missoula's cool. We're all good. And also, um, MCAT, just a couple MCAT announcements is that our um, survey is done, wrapped up. So we are done uh, collecting surveys. We got quite a, we got quite a bit of people uh, uh, who uh, did the survey, which is great because um, today we're going to be announcing the winner of the $250 um, gift card. So it's a $250 gift card to any store in the downtown Missoula area. And we're going to announce it today. Um, on our Facebook page, MCAT social media, so you can check it out anywhere. Um, if you log on to uh, Facebook and go to Missoula's Community Media Resource, you'll find out more about that. But of course, the person who's going to win is going to be definitely contacted promptly. So there's that. So once again, I just want to thank you guys for joining me this morning on um, on MCAT channel one. 89 uh, and stay with me I'm going to be here this Friday next Wednesday and the following Friday and then I'm going to be gone for a couple weeks and then I'll be back again to talk about more things that are happening in the city which includes the update to Title 20 um, an overlay which they're going to be doing to help combat or maybe uh, enhance the idea of uh, the neighborhood reflection in the university district and beyond so we'll learn about that and more uh by checking that out on my morning show wake up missoula so wait for wake up missoula i'm sky ramp thanks for joining me <laughs>